In this video, we are going to understand the rendering behavior with respect to the use reducer hook. Now, use reducer behaves very similar to the use state hook, but for completeness, let's understand with an example. I'm going to begin by creating a new folder in the components folder. The folder name is use reducer. Within this folder, I'm going to create a new file called useReducer.js. Within the file, I'm going to use the snippet RAFC to create a function component. Now, for our example, we are again going to implement a simple counter. We can increment, decrement, and reset the counter. Let's write the code. First, import use reducer from React. Now the use reducer hook accepts initial state and a reducer function as its arguments. Let's define that. For a counter, the initial state is zero. So const initial state is equal to zero. Next, the reducer function. The function accepts state and action as the two arguments and returns the new state. The new state though depends on the action. So let's add a switch statement. The switch expression is action. If the action is increment, return state plus one. If the case is decrement, return state minus one. If the case is reset, return the initial state. Let's also add a default case where we are simply going to return the current state. Now in our component, we can call use reducer, passing in the reducer and the initial state. This returns the state variable which we are going to call as count and also the dispatch function. For the JSX, I'm going to add a div tag that displays the current count followed by three buttons. So let me quickly copy paste the code. Format it. And you can see here, we have a div tag that displays the current count value. And then we have the first button, which dispatches the increment action on click. The second button dispatches the decrement action on click. And finally, the reset button dispatches the reset action. Since our main focus here is to understand the rendering of the component, let's add a log statement. Console.log use reducer render. All right, let's include the component in app.js and understand the render behavior. Like I mentioned already, useReducer behaves similar to useState when it comes to rendering. The difference is that with useState, we have the setter function, but with useReducer, we have the dispatch function. Since we have just been through the use state behavior, I'll go over this fairly quicker. On page load, we have the log message from the initial render. If I clear the console and click on increment, decrement, or reset, the component re-renders. So anytime you dispatch an action, the component re-renders. Let's go over the render and commit faces again so that you start to get a hang of this. We begin with the component tree. We have the app component and the use reducer component. When we click on a button in the use reducer component, the reducer hooks dispatch function is called, which flags the use reducer component as needing an update. During the render phase, React will first go through the component tree and identify the flagged components. 
it sees that usage user is the only component that needs an update. React then uses the createElement method to convert the component's JSX into a React element. Then it will diff the element produced from the previous render to the new render. It will identify the changes and hand it over to the commit phase where the changes are applied to the DOM. This is what happens when you use the reducer hook in a React component. Now, just like you state, use reducer also has the exception. If you're updating the state to the same value after the initial render, the component will not re-render. If you're updating to the same value after re-renders, React will render that specific component one more time and then bails out from any subsequent renders. So if I reload the page, the component has finished its initial render. The state value is zero. If I now click on the reset button, which again sets the state value to zero, React will not re-render the component. Now though, if I click on increment, you can see that the component re-renders and the state value is one. If I click on reset, the component re-renders and the state value is zero. If I click on reset again, the component will re-render one more time. Hereafter, any click on reset will not cause the component to re-render. Let's go over the render phase for this scenario as well. To be honest, it is identical to what we had seen with use state, but I want you to get bored of it, not because of me repeating how it works, but because you have understood the concept so well that you feel it is boring. Let's do this. We begin with the component tree. We have the app component and the use red user component. When we click on the button in the use red user component, the dispatch function is called, which flags the use red user component as needing an update. React will go through the component tree and identify the flagged components. It sees that use red user component is flagged. However, there is a catch. React requires that use red user updates must pass in or return a new reference as the state value. If the state is a primitive type, it has to be a new string or number or boolean. If it is not the case, React will simply bail out from the render phase for that component. The bailing out part though has two cases. If only the initial render is completed and the value passed into the dispatch function is the same as before, the render phase bails out from proceeding further. However, if the component has been re-rendered already, then the component will proceed with the render phase one more time. React generates the React element from the JSX. Reconciliation takes place. React sees that there is no change from the previous render and simply exits the render phase. So that is the rendering behavior with respect to the user at user hook. Let me quickly summarize it. The dispatch function from a use reducer hook will cause the component to re-render. However, the exception is when you update the state to the same value as the current value. If you're updating to the same value after the initial render, the component will not re-render. If you're updating to the same value after re-renders, React will render that specific component one more time and then bails out from any subsequent renders. All right, in the next video, let's talk about render and state immutability. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.